Good morning and welcome to the Capital Gang. I am Oscar Semoyam Soke. And this morning we have a big man in the studio. He's the Commissioner General of the Uganda Revenue Authority, Mr. John Mosinguzi Rujoki. Is that the right way to say Rujoki? That's correct. You're most welcome to the Capital Gang. Yes. And dear listeners. Ah, fantastic. I have uh, another guest, interestingly, seated right next to him. He is Dr. Tadio Tad. Tadius. Yes, Tadio, I can manage. Dr. Tadio Musoke Nagenda. Chairman uh, Kasita, Uganda, you're most welcome to the Capital Gang. Thank you, Oscar. Good morning. Yes, and I have. Uh, I know, but PhD. Pardon? I thought Kasita had only one person. <laughs> Kasita has many people. I even want to join. I also want to join. Yes. I'm missing out. So Kito is the only one. He's the only one. He's the spokesperson. So we have uh, Fono Pondo. You're most welcome to Gang. We've missed you. Thank you. You yeah. missed me because when uh, I sensed that John Musingo was going to start squeezing business people, yeah. I went to Kapelebion where his office doesn't reach. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Very wise. I have Honorable Semuju. You are most welcome to Capital Gang. Yes, Oscar. Thank you. Mm. Uh, congratulations on uh, uh, conquering the first. I hope you have remained a holy person and you will maintain the values <laughs> that, that's what of the fast. Be. That's what it should yeah, be. But okay. human nature is not simple to deal with. Uh -huh. Okay. We have a guest, Mr. Benjamin Katana, National Treasurer of NUP. You're most welcome to Ghana. Thank you very much, Oscar. Good yeah. morning to you and all our listeners. Yes. Last week we had you here as a member of sure. NUP. Today we have you as a substantial someone to discuss financial issues because you're seated right next to the shadow finance minister <laughs> and then you're the national treasurer so we hope to have a good discussion sure uh, i'm uh, waiting for honorable katuntu and honorable wanyoto who should be in uh, uh, at a given time so uh <coughs> miss something you're in the hot seat the Casita people don't like you, don't like you much. <laughs> you went and visited them, but still they don't like you. I, I understand their plight. This morning I had a, a kind of a discussion with Fono Pondo and others. Also, us who are in the business world, we don't like you. Uh, who likes you if we start there? <laughs> mm, maybe Fono Pondo and Semuju are in government. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Oscar. The dear listeners, good morning to all of you. Mm. It's true that uh, taxmen are never liked, and this is not uh, something that has started in Uganda or has started recently. Mm. If you read your Bible and maybe other uh, books that uh, relate to that history, even in the days of Jesus Christ, taxmen were not liked. Mm. One day the Lord visited a tax collector called uh, Zacchaeus and he was strongly criticized by the Pharisees why he had visited the sinner. So the love or lack of it for the taxman is not the issue. I think the issue is uh, as a tax collector are we being fair? Are we overcharging the citizens or are we collecting the fair share of tax that we should be collecting. So if they like us for, for, for if they hate us for, for not charging them fairly, they will be right. But if they hate us for doing our job and doing it fairly, then the, the fault is theirs. We leave God to judge who is right and wrong. But I think taxation as unpopular as it is or as unlikable as it is, it is something that we must do. If we are alive and one yes, movement, yes. everyone must pay I think some that's tax. Not in dispute. I yeah. think the problem begins with uh, uh, Honorable Semuju here mm. setting a target that is not achievable. Now, when you have a target that's not achievable, then you come and squeeze us, the taxpayers, unfairly. I'm going to use your own words. Mm. So, isn't that the problem? 
Well, that should be the discussion <coughs> then. The yeah. discussion should be on tax rates. Are we paying uh, high taxes? Are we paying reasonable taxes? One of the indexes that measure uh, the contribution of tax is what they call the tax burden. The economists know that uh, the, the factors that are considered to get the effective tax rate of a country. And from my research, what I see from very credible research institutions, uh, the tax burden in Uganda is at 11.8%. How do you compare that with a country like Denmark, uh, which is about 40, 42 or 47%? How do you compare that uh, Denmark, 46%? How do you compare that with a, a country like uh, Italy, 42%? How do you compare this with the Netherlands, 49%? In the rank of tax burden, Uganda is number 140, much below even our neighbors in the East African region. Mm -hmm. I think Kenya is at 17.4, Rwanda is at 17. So, Tanzania at 13. Yes, th mm. Tanzania is in the same range with us. So, uh, this is just the tax burden. The other indicator for <laughs> tax contribution is the tax to GDP. Tax to GDP. In Uganda, again, we are below most of the countries around us. We are just approaching 14 now, mm. but for many years we've been between 10 and 12 percent. Yes, but these Mr. big countries that are developed, they're in above they're, they're, 40 percent. Yeah. So, but I, I don't want to be sympathetic with that one because yes. with your 11 percent, if mm. if you sometime take time and measure the pain they bear, mm. so you you exert the pain of 40 percent on the 11 percent payers in Uganda. Thank you. I very would much. put that to you. Thank you very much. And I much, don't Oscar. know what yes. effort you're doing to raise the burden to 20 percent, yeah. so that we the 11 percent stop suffering from you. Thank you. Mm. I can speak about that. Yes. The solution to that pain is widening the tax base, mm -hmm. is increasing the number of taxpayers on the register. And one of the fundamental technologies that will help us widen the tax base is the technology called IFRIS, Electronic Fiscal Receipting and Invoicing Solution. This will do it for Uganda. We will have many more people contributing their fair share of tax than a few being overloaded. But this is the technology that is being re resisted by my brother here and the people he represents. So let's talk about this mm. because that is the fair discussion. Yes. Yeah. So we shouldn't put it to you that yes. you are uh, 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 that you are the lazy one, that you have failed uh, to increase the burden and you only have one tool, yes. the EFRIS, to try and increase the, the tax base? Absolutely. I'm committed to this, Oscar. For mm. the last three years, we've increased our tax register from 1.7 million taxpayers to 4.2 million taxpayers today. Mm. So the tax register is growing, without a doubt. Mm. But the tax register can grow in numbers. For it to grow in quality, in volume, the contribution of every taxpayer, we need technologies like IFRIS. And the moment we embrace these technologies, which are transparent and fair for everybody, then we will see a quantum growth on even the value of the tax. Mm. So th that is why that is I, I, I'm very glad to be here, Oscar. And as yes. you know, it is it is my first time on the Capital Gang, despite mm. many invitations from you. Mm. But I think it's good also sometimes to have conflict uh, with the people you are serving, because that propels us now into real discussion. And I'm here to discuss this. If you okay. give me the opportunity, I'll tell you about IFRIS, because okay. it is the thing that is causing that the storm. Is, yes, in, and, the and the, the, in the business world, some people think it is not wise to use IFRIS, a departmental store uh, tool. But Dr. Musoke Nagenda is here. You've heard from the Commissioner General, he's very clear. He says that if you apply IFRIS, that will get more taxpayers. So, and he has taken time to meet Kasita. Uh, he's here, seated with you on the table. What, what's the problem? Uh, thank you, Oscar. For sure, we do appreciate the strategy which URA is using. 
when he came into office, as Kasita, we decided to engage URA. And we carried out several sensitization engagements within our members. Uh, but uh, the fact is that there are so many points uh, which are exciting the business community to reach an extent of demonstrating. It's not just efforts. Uh, we have so many concerns. Mainly, I want to start with the VAT. I want to, to highlight just a simple uh, illustration. Like, just imagine, like, when I purchase a bag of sugar from Kachula, uh, 250000 already there is VAT. I just had a small profit margin of 2000 That one, again, when I reach to Chikubo, they want me also to put VAT. So we are perceiving that is double taxation. So it's around the VAT you are supposed to add on. It's around 45000 So now the cost of the bag already has been put to 297000 So what does it imply? That a customer from Mukono to come to buy from Chikubo, he will prefer to buy from Kachila, from the factory directly. And by that, this is what is causing an alarm to our Chikubo traders. Reason. We are having a challenge where investors have turned into hawkers, retailers, distributors. You cannot imagine where a factory even can sell one bag of sugar. So sincerely, they are, they are distorting the whole chain of business. So there is just logically, for us, our members are assuming because we went and complained to the president about investors distorting the chain of trade. That's our members are telling us that, can you imagine, how comes that after meeting the president on Monday, enforcement was so terrible. Is it a technique of eliminating us out of business? So that's why we are requesting, uh, I think, parliament, because you are able to pass these laws. For sure, this is double taxation. Already I've paid my VAT when I'm buying this bag of sugar. Then again, you are telling me, when I had 45, no customer will come and buy from Chikubo. Already the business environment in Chikubo is not favorable like it used to be. Most of our big guys in Chikubo have closed shops to go to farming, to go to other avenues. Because when these investors start even competing with the locals, there is no way you can compete with the manufacturer. So that's why people have totally rejected the EFRI. So we are appealing to URA. Can we put a special committee to see that how can we utilize this feedback? Because feedback is so important. And then we can also start also, that's why we took even petition to parliament, to make sure that can we have a joint effort to analyze and, and really understand why are traders rejecting IFRIS? By the time I was approached by URA, personally I was excited about the IFRIS program because we, we have to, to, to adopt technology. When you adopt technology, it helps you to supervise your business. But with those, those, those challenges coming up now, we are a little bit scared. Secondly, the penalties. The penalties with this system they are totally discouraging our members. Uh, I got a scenario whereby one of our members called me, he had an adware, he decided to adopt the IFRI system. Because the, the system had some issues, technical issues, and the customer could not wait for this receipt, he just sold a brush at just 10,000. So when the enforcement team got her, he had to be penalized 6 million. Just imagine a brush of 10,000 and then a penalty of 6 million. And then another case we had at Casita, a gentleman uh, presented this issue was like uh, when the, the, the had electricity had issues and the machine had some faults. So when the team from ERA came, they told him we have tampered with our machine and they were demanding 30 millions. Or to be taken to court, that's how they explained and they could imprison him for not, for not more than 10 years. 
So when in, this information flows back to the traders' community, see how they get scared. So currently, the perception in Chukubo is that can we put the IFRIS on hold? Can we have more engagements? Can you understand how we do business? Another challenge was that we got, I want to, to, to protect this company, but it has also the case it brought to Casita, whereby it has this snack business. Snacks, snacks. So he has these border border guys, they come to the factory and move around to look for customers. So whenever they find these border border guys moving around to look for customers, they are penalized that this guy is avoiding to pay taxes. So the guy is saying now I have to, to, to close business. So we need a lot which we have to understand how this IFRIS operates and uh, the, the, the shortcomings. How can they be revisited? How can URA improve? The fact is we do acknowledge. When it, came, when it started, there are so many complaints. But it has kept on improving this system. So let URA provide you more room for improvement and engagement and even getting feedback. Another point which I don't want to skip is about the poverty levels in this country, which have been uh, mm. created by the high taxes. The high taxes have sent away our customers. We used, Uganda used to benefit, it was like the Dubai of Africa. We used to get customers from Congo, we used to get customers from South Sudan, we used to get customers from Rwanda. Because the taxes were flexible. And even, let me be open, even we used to, to, to at least to, to smuggle. So when you smuggle, <laughs> the commodities are favorable. So we could compete. So when John came into office, <laughs> <laughs> the guy had a strategy of becoming very friendly to the traders. Actually, he deserves another tab now that you say that. <laughs> so, so, all the loopholes were sealed off. So, the Casita, what, what Casita did, Casita, what did, to make sure that to sustain our businesses, we are promoting tax compliance to our members. So, when you comply, you cannot compete in the regional market. And by this becoming a disadvantage, where a Congolese could come here and buy what we import from China, and even our industries here could benefit because they, they are, we have variety. And secondly, the hotels. Now most of the hotels in the city, rats are enjoying the beds. Because even if we now, the, the, the men who could go there and rest, we don't have the money to go there and rest. So the rats are enjoying. The traders who could come here, they hey, are no longer here. They doctor, just go to Kenya. <coughs> Dr. Msoke Nagin, first pause for a minute. <laughs> he, he will go for, he will go for a break. Yes. <laughs> Not yet. Is it a commercial break? Uh, Not yet. But of course, you're break. on microphone now. Yeah. Have, have you... You're a lucky man. Have you seen John Musingu's tax collectors, especially the men? <laughs> they walk like they are next to God. <laughs> what what Musoke Nagin is telling you, even if no. you have complied, even if you have the, the way they approach you is like you have committed a crime. Yeah, I think we are dealing with a continuum of issues. Yes. And we are failing to disaggregate what is the responsibility of URA what is the responsibility of the go, mainstream go, go government the executive mm. and parliament? And then we, of course, the business people, the business community. What uh, Dr. Nagenda is talking about is the thinking and the practice of Omontu Wawansi. And that concern, I think, need to be taken into consideration, particularly when making the law but also when enforcing. Now, to answer your question about John's people, for a long time, of course, we came from uh, extreme want and we militarized tax collection. With that militarization also came something else, favoritism. The way we recruit personnel, you find I am the son of son, so, so, so I'm the head of the department, I bring Sometimes we have failed to help the people we recruit at URA to be professional, to be sensitive to the people they deal with. Even where an explanation would do, yeah. they use the hammer. Force. And, and so, uh, sometimes bad policy, but also bad methods 
of work. Now complicates John's work, even where he means well. I wouldn't uh, <coughs> have a lot of sympathy with the Dr. Misoke. When he says there are people he used to enjoy, a lot of people coming, a lot of customers coming, Uganda has expanded. I don't think there's a reason for a businessman in Arua any longer to come to Chikuo because the manufacturers now have outlets and dealers in Arua. <coughs> so it should be your job maybe together with the URA to sensitize to teach traders in Chikubo and in Kampala particularly in, in general the evolving nature of business in Uganda. I live in Mukono. I've lived in Mukono now. This is the 30th year. If you wanted the shoes those days, you had to come to the home street. You want a shirt, you have to come to the home street. I don't know when I, I was last in the home street. Or Chukubo for that matter. Your shirts can be found anywhere. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what I'm simply saying, what I'm simply saying is, today, even the best shoes, the best shirts, the best suits, you can find in Mukono. And therefore, the Caseta group in on Rumu Street need to understand that the business has evolved and therefore you are going to suffer reduction in the clientele in, Chuk in Chukubo and on, on William Street. So that needs that engagement you need to do with your members and with the with your and whoever is concerned. So I think for since it is Mr. Musingu who is here today. I think we need to discuss mainly two things. Policy. If 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 that's the policy, that's the law, and that's what is implementing. Has he bothered? Is it his responsibility to explain the law and the policy to the taxpayers? And if it is his responsibility to do so and he has not done so, can he ensure that he does the explanation, the engagement that mm -hmm. Dr. Musoki is talking about? Now, if it is, if it is about method, then that one is squarely on him. No. If you engaged somebody yesterday and you gave them one week to correct, why would your officers come the following morning and simply close? Yeah. And, and simply close without. Now, the other one is integrated system. <clears throat> this you are a person who comes to close my shop because he sus or she suspects that I have tampered with the machine what is well, what is their competence or they are doing it in order to extract to extort from me because that is also common you have done the right thing but because they have judged that you don't understand the system very well they say you have tampered and there is no immediate way to appeal and the fellow threatens you with a padlock and the URA seal and I think that causes anger among the different uh, yeah. stakeholders. So I think for John, he needs to look at the militarization, the impunity, and lack of professionalism in enforcement of the law and enforcement of the procedure. I think if we do that, uh, of course, sometimes uh, we, the politicians, add even another burden to, to John. They say, but we don't see the benefit of the tax. I, I think that shouldn't be John's question. Whether John has collected money and then and the road was made, that should be Ofono's question. That question should be given to Ofono. That question should be given to uh, the right honorable prime minister. The, that question should be given to the president of Uganda. You have collected our tax. Why haven't you built the road? Or why have you built a bad road? That should be that should be Thank a question yes. that should go to the executive and mm. parliament that scrutinizes the policy brought forward by the executive. But the fact mm. that these bad policies can go through cabinet, go through parliament, and they even enact into into law speaks a lot to uh, to the kind of the quality of the discourse that is going on in our decision-making boardrooms. Before you came, Oscar, just this is the last one. I was raising with the Katana here. I said, we are encouraging rural transformation. But as soon as I build a guest house or a commercial building, 
the next day, as soon as I complete and I get tenants, the next day, URA now uses the water meter, the women meter to track me and they give me the bill to start immediately paying rent. Register. Yeah, register. Now, it, you, now does you, this policy... You, you missed that one, yeah. the local council tax. Yes. Service does this well. encourage <laughs> actually rural transformation? Because it means that people are going to say, uh, if I, I will not build a guest house in a, in a budu, in Idudi, I will not build a commercial building in Idudi, because as soon as I build and I put there water, I put there umeme, John is coming for me. And, I think that's, uh, that's uh, yeah. And, uh, I think that's now at the level of policy. So we need to deal with option? it. <laughs> no, we need to deal with the policy. And what option do you have? Um, in, in my in my role thing, for example, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm saying, can there be? No, can there be? For example, we we can gazette, rural town councils, for example, or rural town boards, and we say if somebody has put up a four or a ten bedroom guest house, can you give them? Tax exemption for three years, five years. Even, you look at you look at even one year yeah. Work. You look at the rate of business there, and yeah. then you can come and tax. Oh, can you can we can go the other way, which is complicated, but we need to do it. Cost of building materials. Can there be special codes, for example, for cement, for iron bars, for other building materials, so that these people register? I register at the beginning. I say I'm going to put up a 20 bedroom guest house in Idudi and I register for it, I'm given a code which I now use to go to the hardware shop to buy the cement uh -oh. and, um, and there is a system for tracking me that when I buy that cement I actually build that guest house in Idudi I, 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 or in Murano. We, we want to discuss that on another day. Let's go to Treasurer Most welcome to Honorable Abdul Katuntu, Honorable <laughs> Lydia Wanyoto uh, Mr. Benjamin Katana You've listened to all three. Uh, I have put my behind behind OO. Um, he, <laughs> he has spoken for all of us. Uh, what do you have to say to responding to, to Mr. Msinguzi and Dr. Nagenda Msoke? Thank you very much, Oscar. I think the discussion on taxes and collection of taxes, the fairness, the unfairness, Is, 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 is broader than IFRIS. The confrontation that we see today between the city traders and URA is simply a boiling point. That there have been issues to do with taxes and enforcement of taxes. And I think OO has uh, hinted on some of them that this introduction of IFRIS, with all the good intentions that it has, it has found already a relationship that is problematic. Not because URA should not collect taxes, but because there are a number of issues that should be addressed. And the starting point is that, uh, like the Commissioner General mentioned, taxes are a necessary burden. But the citizens should be able to see the importance and the necessity of the burden that they are bearing. That you are driving on roads that are buried there, and as soon as you park, you receive an email from URA. Before you breathe, you receive a text message from URA. Before you, <laughs> you rest, you receive a call. And so you're asking yourself that uh, because much as there are, there are issues of mandate, like OO alluded to, that URA has a mandate, but URA is part of a bigger government structure, and you cannot discuss it in isolation, that if I'm paying taxes, I should see value for money. But it would appear that in Uganda, much as there are some services being offered, we are largely being pushed to pay a lot of taxes to finance the luxuries of the privileged class that almost with the exception of all have not seen him with the motorcade much as he had the government agency when the dealer see <laughs> 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 that even uh, people that had agencies small departments. small departments have a motorcade have a lot of security detail mm. 
Uh, the, the, and the, you wonder the, if this uh, is necessary. I mean, that's a more of a political question. Yes, when I'm you have getting... John Masinguzi here, you, you want to <laughs> dwell on because he won't be able to respond to those. Yes. Yeah. And, and so the I mentioned that this is just a boiling point. Wow. There have been other discussions previously related to taxes that are introduced, policy shift. Uh, for example, the, 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 there was uh, an argument, and I don't know if it has been settled, between people who import wheat, for example, that there was an introduction of a new position that warehousing <coughs> for certain commodities was stopped, meaning that you have to pay tax before uh, at the point of entry. If my point of entry is Mbakasi or Mombasa, that I have to pay tax at that point, and all the attendant processes notwithstanding, meaning that money that I would be using to bring in more things and doing business is now stuck. I've paid tax, but the processes of bringing the products up to here. So which brings us to a discussion that when they're introducing these new position, policy positions and new taxes, do they put into consideration the implications it has on business growth? Mm. The other aspect related to VAT and IFRIS since you want me to restrict the discussion to the specific aspects <coughs> not really that, for example I'm if I'm running the discussion capital, to what he can respond if to I'm running what he can improve radio, mm. and I issue an invoice for the month of March that I issued an invoice to say umeme of a hundred million much as umeme has not yet paid me I file returns at the end of the month that I issued this invoice. By 15th, I'm expected to have paid much as I have not been paid, which means that I'm going to be forced to go and borrow money and pay, and this money will be attracting interest. If I don't pay, URA will also be charging me penalty for not paying by the 15th. The fact that I've not yet received the payment, notwithstanding. The other aspect is the high-handedness that has been alluded to. And uh, the business community many times, the members of the business community are reluctant to complain because they don't want to be in conflict with the people at URA and other government agencies. The, we have seen in other places, not necessarily in Kampara, where it has even led to fatalities. But here the fatalities may not have been human, but business and many examples have been given. So I, I, I think there is a need for a point of reflection on the part of URA, but also in terms of orientation <coughs> of the staff mm. that you, 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 your priority is to create taxes, but you must create an enabling environment for the businesses from which you are collecting money to be able to grow so that you are able to collect more money. The Commissioner General has talked about the expansion of the register. But this is largely about acquisition of tin. But many entities and individuals may obtain tin today one transaction for one transaction forever. <laughs> why? Because businesses are not growing. And part of why they are not growing is that they are being overtaxed. But in addition to the these structured taxes that we are talking about, is that in the process, people are extorted. When I'm filing returns, and I know you will tell me that, uh, you know, we tax profits. But when I'm filing returns, I will not mention that I was extorted 500,000 shillings as a business person, but this is a cost on the business. And, 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 and so, there is the need, need to do the end-to-end -end cleaning up of tax administration, but yes. also uh, mm. when they are introducing new taxes, they should bear in mind the implication on the general growth of businesses and the, and the economy. Because it's not a matter of setting targets and meeting them. You may meet them today, but what is the implication in the overall growth of the businesses in the country? Okay. You're on microphone. Uh, Benjamin <coughs> Katana puts it well. It's not yet 15th of the month. You are sending you an email. It is not yet time for you to file the annual payment for you are a I don't even know how you'll tell them I've not received payment. <laughs> Oscar, mm. let me I, we had a strike at school mm. because our power had been disconnected. 
in, in increasingly more in and more meeting, you become you are becoming like president Museveni. in the you meeting go, you go back the, into history yes in the meeting mm. with the headmaster the issue of food the issue of water all the other issues <coughs> now came up <coughs> the <coughs> the issue with the URA the strike is not just on the technology for receipting and invoicing I have interacted with traders this this is this is one of the problems <coughs> uh, let me tell you Oscar you buy a pair of jeans in the past they were charging a percentage now the new arrangement is a kilogram so it rather told me we now have must have a weighing scales in our shops for growth <laughs> for, for really yeah he can respond because they are charging four dollars per a kilo and that will come to about fifteen thousand a gene that uh, in the past was being sold at 25 if they charge you four dollars per kilogram mind you now you're supposed to have a weighing scale that is 15. <laughs> then they charge you uh, <clears throat> VAT of 18 percent, which comes to about uh, um, 4,000, 4,500. So you add uh, 15 of the kilogram, the 4,000 of VAT, and then you have withholding tax. They were able, I think, in the past to maneuver. But I think Musingus now has deployed, <laughs> has deployed like a, like a security. <laughs> At the entrance of most of the uh, arcades, the URA people. These days, what has complicated the matter is that uh, when you buy a gin outside the, either an arcade or outside the weighing scale. No, no, no. There is a, a Musingus enforcement officer who now demands uh, an e receipt. And you are supposed to buy equipment from URA that issue those e receipts. So you now have a weighing scale, you have a machine from Musingus for e receipt. <laughs> and every person who leaves uh, the point of sale is being asked to please produce a receipt. And as a result, traders are complaining. Customers already had a problem problem of borrowing, problem of inflation, problem of what the customers are not as many as they used to be. Now they have gone down significantly, making trade very difficult in Kampala. So that is one point. The second point is that uh, you seem to have a policy that seeks to protect some of the local industries. That's, wh that's why Chinese uh, don't pay the same tax. Sometimes they are tax exempted. But their items are being sold by the factories themselves. They have opened up uh, outlets in Kampala. And for them, they import what they call raw materials. I, I have learned that actually it's not raw material. They just bring and join and then go to the market. They are, they are traders. They are not manufacturers. They are actually traders, but they bring in raw materials, just join them wherever, with Ambari, and then they are on the market. So they have not only crowded, but they are actually aging out the local traders. And then the, 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 the second, the third point that I've been told uh, by traders is, is the behavior uh, that generally everybody has spoken about. So these guys behave yes. like uh, they are doing you a favor to pay tax. So you are a criminal even before you have or, committed or, a crime. Or senior police officers. Yeah. Mm. So they, they are all over. I, I was told that he recruited about uh, either 3,000 or 2,000 soldiers who are now in URA. <laughs> Because he was uh, initially part of uh, the Kaihura SRPS, the, the military outfit <laughs> deployed by the president to collect tax. So he comes with his knowledge, but also with his military background, <laughs> having been part of a military outfit. So he brought in about 3,000. I am told, I haven't verified this myself, that he has about 3,000. Those uh, mean looking people whose job is to go and, and enforce. <clears throat> so having said that, uh, uh, Oscar, if you, if you can allow me, I also sympathize with URA. Uh, why? Government presents a budget every year with the sources of funding. And the major one is uh, local revenue. When we started the budget process, actually, URA had said uh, 
tax collection was going to grow by less than one percent. I think now they are not the ones doing the projection. Projections are being done at finance because that was their projection. Finance now has revised the projection to from 29 trillion to about 31 because they want to accommodate every demand and they give you a budget that they cannot finance. So he faces too much pressure to correct. That's why they are very aggressive because he's going to be judged by how much money he has put on table. Not uh, how big his register is, not how big his what. If you can't bring money for government to finance the budget, they're going to say you're incompetent as you are. It doesn't matter whether the economy is functioning or not. So in that regard, I sympathize with him and anyone who will be in URA or who has ever been in URA. So there are issues, and that's why I said, I thought, Oscar, that a discussion like this may be in the future. We need to benefit from the presence of finance itself. They are the original committer of this crime. So him is just the implementer. Because they are the ones who say, we want so much money. You are not performing. This has not been corrected. And as a result, he also reigns in hard on traders. The result is the strike that you have uh, downtown. Mm. So I think for me, the solution, um, sometimes taxation is very complicated. Even at the parliamentary level, you pass things that you don't, you don't know. And sometimes the, even the time is not there. So as you are shouting, the eyes have it. <laughs> then <laughs> implementation <laughs> begins. Because I, I called the, one of the commissioner of URA, I had problems in my constituency. They require that these people who operate small shops selling sugar and, 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 and uh, are supposed to keep some form of books that URA should look at at the end of uh, either a, a financial year and then charge them a percentage. Many of these people selling mandazi and chapati and uh, buhunga and rice, they don't want to be burdened by those things. So they, they, URA had started closing their shops. So when I called URA, the commissioner told me, but you are the ones who passed this tax. You go to section number this. <laughs> Say, now I'm in trouble. But I hadn't myself seen it. So part of the problem is also the sensitization. So these things begin without uh, sufficient knowledge by people who are affected. And the only time you get to know is when you are is reading for you a section. That's when you know this thing exists. And that's why the, the government of Ofono Pondo, because this should be your job. This should be your job to do as much sensitization as possible. If you don't do it, then you'll have a strike, even on things that are genuine. Because for me, on the surface of it, I don't see why um, the new technology should be a problem. I don't see why. But the problem is that uh, it, it's being thrown at people. Some of them are hearing it for the first time. With the demand, come to URA and buy an equipment. Tomorrow you begin issuing e-receipts. There are people at uh, the door who say, where is the e-receipt as you exit? So that's what has complicated this matter. Mm. Abdul, Honorable Abdul Katonto, where do you start? <laughs> I sympathize with Mr. Musingus. <laughs> you do, you are damned. You don't do, you are damned. And let me tell you why. <laughs> Taxation is a function of politics, it's a function of the law, it's a function of economics, and it's a function of common sense. I'll start with the politics and the law. When you look at the Constitution, I think it should be Chapter 9, Article 152. Uh, I'm not so sure, but it should be. The first article, when you're dealing with the national finances, is about taxation. You can only impose a tax with the authority of parliament, by an act of parliament. So it is only parliament that can impose a tax. However, and when you talk about parliament, you have talked about both politics and the law together. And then, even where the act delegates that for purposes of waiver or varying, it says you need to report to parliament. So, some of the crimes you people are, are thinking Musingu is, is, is guilt of, he has nothing to do with it. It falls squarely with us because we impose the, the tax. But it's a little bit uh, easier because it's the, it's the face of the taxation process. So he starts with it and so on. Yeah. Let, let's look at the EFRI system. 
Why was it introduced? In law, we call it the mischief rule. What was the mischief which it was intended to be cured when we introduced that system? And who were profiteering or benefiting from a system without an atheist system? And when it came, who were first of all affected? And doctor here, you should be very honest. You know why. Men, there was a lot of uh, avoidance of tax. And when you bring in this system, it sort of tightens the loopholes. And what do you expect the people who are benefiting from the previous legal regime? They'll make a noise definitely. Maybe parliament, as it introduced the system, we should have rolled it out really not at a goal. You pilot it. You start with the bigger boys, taxpayers, then you roll it down. Slowly, because it's changing from a system to another a little bit abruptly causes a little bit of problems. So you, you just need to do it gradually. And people realize th there is now a new order, Oscar. Uh, you, you have, because you see, there is no way you can, like a doctor is saying, uh, doctor, you said Dr. Musoken again. Dr. Musoken, I say, you know, we, we need just to wait, to shave. It's not possible. The world is moving. We can only improve on, uh, improve on it. Where there are challenges, how, how do we address them? To imagine that you are going to shelve it, it will not be possible. Let me ask, do you think in the world, this is the first country where they're introducing e-systems? E e of course not. That's where the world is going. That's where the world has moved. However, does it have challenges? Yes, it does. Can we address those challenges? Of course we can. And that's when maybe Mr. Samsung should be so sensitive to the taxpayer. So, well, if these people are complaining about this, what is the problem? How do we handle it? I'll mm -hmm. give you an example. I'm going to interrupt you there. Okay. Stop for a break. And then after the break, I'll come back to you. But you make a good point. Tony Kent Chazi here says, how much is the Efris machine anyway? Traders are saying it's, it is expensive. <clears throat> so why can't you avail it free of any charges? Secondly, charging in dollars in a poor <laughs> shillings country. Do you know that, that eventually is a problem. it will be the taxpayer mm. to pay it even in any case? Uh, well, <laughs> we, we pay it. Yeah. <laughs> you do uh, your dumb, you don't do yes. your Yes, and, and some people say, say is it 500,000 the machine? It. So problems. Let's stop for a quick break. See you after the break. Not to my show. The Capital Gang on 91.3 Capital FM. Oh. The Capital Gang on 91.3 Capital FM. Welcome back from the break. This is the Capital Gang. Apologies, a bit of a long break. Just shows that a program with a URA Commissioner General is well listened to. Abdu, I cut you off midpoint. Yes, I think the system has challenges, but like any other new system coming in place, and that's when Mr. Musingu should be able to listen and try to have them uh, addressed. But at the same time, we also don't need to hide our heads in the sun. Do we have issues of integrity, especially with taxpayers? Yes, there's that issue. And we need now talk to Dr. Musoke here that really you as businessmen, you need to address that particular issue in your association. Say, look here, let us comply, as the law says. However, Oscar, this system needs a little bit of literacy, the new system. Now I'm wondering, go to Chikubo, how many businessmen are literate? They can be able to operate that system? Maybe they are maybe 60 percent but 40 percent are not so they have those challenges and that is the the, the tax administration and tax implementation agencies like uh, mr msingzi should be able to take that into account how to handle some of those issues dr Muso, I, I i i'm not convinced by this argument that uh, you people you are calling it a trade order that the manufacturers should allow as many businessmen to come in, wholesalers, and so on, before you reach the ultimate customer or eat of your product, if I may call it so. You see, the more businesses, businessmen come in along the chain with their marginal profits, it is certain affects the price of the commodity. I'll give you an example. If I'm 
Mandela. Is it Mzee Mandela? Of super no. flower. Spring. 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 He is in that place where the Naruko Longo was Sega, and he has his truck, which takes that product to Arua, to a retailer. What Mr. Musoka is saying, that no, allow a wholesaler from Chikubo to buy from you, he takes to somebody in Arua to buy before it reaches the retailer. Meaning you have three other people also working for marginal profit. There is no way that product would be the same price. And let me give you about would, bread. Would, maybe you got it wrong, or I am not getting you. The complaint is that uh, Mandela. The Mandela is also operating shops in Kampala. And I'm not saying, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying no, that's Mandela not the complaint. The complaint is that Chinese who have uh -huh. factories actually have opened shops in Chikubu. No, 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 it's, yeah. it's beyond that. It's, yeah, and you see, they are, they are telling you a chain and their order. You get it. Both the manufacturer and the... You see, let me give you an example. When you have, uh, like for us no, in the East, you have the uh, Ntake Bakery. Yes. He has his truck. He goes on distributing to all the supermarkets in the Eastern Uganda. Just puts like a 50 loaves of bread there. Then the following, the following door two days later, he brings another 50. He picks his man and goes. These people want wholesalers. That's why they are telling you they need their wholesalers there because that is their business. And we are saying, if you are going to complain about what you've said last, cost of living. Cost of living is about prices of commodities. You cannot say we are complaining about high products, high price products, and at the same time, you want to crea create more infrastructures Mid middleman. that middlemen that will have an effect on the ultimate price. So you have to balance both. So, yes, Oscar, are there challenges? Yes, I agree. Some are procedural challenges, which I think Mr. Musingu should listen to and address. Some are substantive, which now Onobo Semuju here should address. If you are talking about high taxes, it has nothing to do with Mr. Musingu. It has everything to do with the parliament. It has everything to do with finance. Because even, uh, Oscar, URA does not have its independent targets. It is given by finance. Why? Because they said this is what we need. So we target you to give us this sort of money. Why? Parliament has passed a law. It has increased this particular tax. So, yes, we, you Muslims should listen. Parliament should listen. And Mr. Ramadan Gobi should also listen. Lastly, Oscar. Uh, Gobi has already said that taxation is going to put us down. <laughs> you know, <laughs> these days, Gobi. Did he say that? Yes. <laughs> so, stop taxation? No, no, not stop taxation. Yeah. When he was an academic, he said over taxation is going to yeah. Oh, yeah, he's no longer an academic, unfortunately. <laughs> and those things happened. <laughs> because you see, he now needs Oscar, the when they tell you you're an academic, your argument is academic. You Don't remember, imagine it you, is a compliment. <laughs> you remember but that's the late for Professor day. Ansibambi? That's for they day. told him to come so, and yeah. implement yeah. the... Lastly, Oscar. When, she, you know, the uh, when, when you, And this now comes back to Fono Pond. You see, when people pay their taxes, we have no choice. We must do something so that they don't regret paying those taxes. The, the, that's not even about environment. It's how do we use their tax. You know, if you are people like a doctor here, you're in Chikubo every that five and so on. And then as you go to your house you in the evening, you're in these potholes, there's no power. You wonder why you really struggle and pay these taxes oh, and so oh, on. Oh, oh, you hear that the Commissioner General of URA who we hear is among the best paid. When his term comes to an end, he's given a service award or 500 million, how would you feel? You yeah. feel bad. Yeah. Alternatively, you hear somebody who, who is supposed to be just speaking. So, Oscar, Oscar, <laughs> and, and that's where the problem is. The Nordic countries uh, John is talking about, I know they have got the highest uh, taxation regime and so on, but when you look at the services, that's why people don't complain. 
health sector is health care is, is vibrant free, you, education, education is free, is free the, the infrastructure is okay no person will be complaining okay. about that thank session. you and Let's that falls squarely with this often opondo in his four wheel gasola which is down there parked and is busy looking for uh, asking about service awards <laughs> uh, so you are competing in, the, in in finishing of yeah, that spares you are You're competing Lydia, you, are, you are competing <laughs> <laughs> you are on microphone now for your submission. Ah, uh, mm. Oscar. Yes. Yeah. O Oscar. Mm. Yes. Uh, in the last two years, I think maybe John can tell us, but they've also faced uh, a change in business environment because since COVID, there has been a lot of uh, an upsurge in online business. So I don't know how, apart from Chikubo, how you are managing the online because there's also that that's another area many people now are getting deliveries from home somebody imports material they've stopped even going to rent shops in chikubo where they are just at home when they bring suits they call they call they call semuju say honorable semuju i have some beautiful suits blue suits and some beautiful neckties he goes and picks even i have some beautiful kanzus whether they've been weighed on which scale i don't know but they go call cartoon to here and they pick so the online business is is something so so we have uh, <laughs> there, there's that element of uh, of uh, online business in uganda and, uh, and also i want to agree with colleagues who have said that um, we have had in the past a very big actually the biggest percentage over 70 percent of uganda's business community have been informal they're in the informal sector they have not been captured on the national grid of the economy but this also speaks to i i hope that our listeners and dr msoke can listen is that you can no longer do business as uganda we are under the esc there are a lot of legislative regimes that bind us i participated in the laws that he made uh, put in place the east african customs union act so you can no longer hide somewhere and say you're doing business and you are putting him um, singles on uh, on the on task he, he has to account to the esc uh, legal regimes in terms of trade and also in terms of customs so that's very important so i think i have to go back to say that our people need to be uh, alive to even le re legal regimes of taxation that are regional that are beyond uganda but also as uganda may buy into the cost of them we have to leverage our tax country, I mean our tax regime of the country to benefit from the ESC uh, regimes. That means very important. Whether you are selling something small in Chikubo, you should be brought up sensitized and help you to leverage in what advantage we have uh, within uh, the ESC. And I must tell you, Musinguzi, you, you, I think you've done a good job with your colleagues, but what remains is to sensitize people. If you go to Rwanda and you go to even Burundi, and of course Kenya, all these countries are working very hard to ensure that they leverage their business community, informal or not formal, to lift them up to benefit from the ESC legal regimes on trade and taxation. So we cannot be left behind. Um, that, that's very, very, very important. Oscar, just as a rider, when I was talking about uh, guest houses, I know somebody who had built a guest house and said, now I'm going to name my guest house Musinguzi. So that, so that when the, these guys come, they find the name is John Musinguzi. They may be kind. And I was just saying, maybe we even, even invite John Musinguzi to be the guest of honor at the launch of this guest house. P people want to survive. So they must find a clever way to survive. So, so but this is a good feedback for you, John. This, this, uh, oh, uh, hold on, you're not on the microphone. Let, let her finish. Let, 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 let her finish. Let, you finish, Lydia. I'm mm. talking about a guest house. <laughs> you finish. Mm. So, 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 John, I'm happy that you, I'm happy that you, you listened to the invitation to the gang because it's good feedback. And I'm very sure that there are many um, people listening out there. We need to lift Uganda's uh, business community to leverage in their advantages of ESC, but also be able to get onto the internet and do online because they can no longer afford. Remember what happened to us in COVID. So COVID has helped us to go online. So we cannot, we can't reverse that. 
But that, let the cost of internet now go down. That should be the campaign. Reduce the cost of internet. Uh, avail, is, is, is that avail, in his power? Avail more mm. stable power. If yep. power has gone off, where is the backup? Av avail affordable generators or online so that these systems do not go off. Let me tell you as I conclude, internet or, or this IT uh, revolution is very intimidating even to the literate. Uh, Katutu was talking about literacy levels in business, but even the most educated, I mean, I know people are still using Katochi because these uh, smartphones disturb them even for security. So let's not uh, uh, underestimate the, car, the f effort and the revolution of IT. It's intimidating even to the most educated and yet we need it to leverage the campaign and the competition beyond Uganda and beyond okay. big, big businesses. Thank so you. that's my contribution. Mm -hmm. This, And I'm, in mind, I, I'm, I'm, I'm mindful about women in business because women have come up to do trading. We have empowered them through money, some small money, even if it is this one of Paris, they're all telling them, pick an enterprise and do business. We need to now go out there and mm. mobilize, train them, and help them to know how to do financial okay. literacy, Thank bookkeeping, you. but also do business for profit. Some of them are busy doing business, but at a loss. That's very, very mm. important for Thank us. Thank you. Thank you, Lydia. I'm going to squeeze in Dr. Msokena again before uh, Commissioner General responds because he has taken copious notes. Uh, Gaba Andron, ex formerly Twitter, tongue in cheek, says at Semwe Amsoke uh, at uh, URA CG, interest is not to facilitate trade through favorable tax policies, but rather to keep his, uh, please his boss. URA staff are not willing to educate the business community about tax, but rather intimidate them and extort money. They will tell you about imports uh, and import duty and so on and so forth. Uh, Dr. Msoken again, just a one that he can respond to, then he blew a compound response. Thank you, Oscar. I need the attention of Honorable Kantun to because yes. he has brought in some allegations. Uh, we as Casita, we have decided to engage our members of parliament on different levels because we have discovered they are still ignorant about the operations of businesses. By the way, when we visited parliament, our delegation seriously attacked the members of parliament <laughs> because personally I tried to contest and then I lost. So looking for votes is not so easy. But we are in, when they're in parliament, they think they're going to die from parliament. And they don't consider the voters and the business community. So as Casita, we are going to be this time so determined that even we shall start sponsoring members of parliament so that they can champion, so that they can champion the, the interest. Please don't in interfere. I am still presenting. I, I only so have one I microphone need, on. Yes, I, I, need, on. I need to train him one thing that in, in business, there is a raw material supplier to the manufacturer. The manufacturer does the processing, the packaging. Then there is agencies, agents. Then the agents, there is wholesalers, then retailers, and then consumer. I pity the, 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 the area where Mr. Gantutu is representing. Just imagine if all these ones are left out of employment. What will happen? So he thinks, by the way, we thought that even we have tried to fight and approach all offices. But we thought that even some members of parliament are compromised. How can you tell me that you want a Chinese to do the distribution, to do the wall selling? The retailers, just imagine now when you go to Nabugabo, the manufacturer of jeans has hired hawkers on the street to start to call customers. So you mean our members should go, should close shops? Because of the an investor? No, that is totally unacceptable. So as we okay. can see, we will not accept that. And by the way, I think I will, I will they, invite they, you to come to, 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 to Chikuba they, and explain they, they, that, they, they, Dr. that system. Okay. This one you I was what? hoping that you had a comment for, uh, John Musim. No, for, for, this for, one, for, we'll for, come back to it, don't worry. Uh, Ofono uh, Pono, yours? Uh, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to it. Ofono Pono, did you have one for John Musinguzi? I want to give him a chunk of time. I do have for John no. Yes. In relation to Dr. Musoke, uh -huh. saying, let us hold. I think, well, yeah, has to be great. I think we have said previously with other issues by the president, Ugandans generally don't like formalization. Remember, 
the registration for national ID, the registration for, for SIM cards. Which one are you talking about? Registration one, two, or three? Um, all, of all, of them. Them. all of them. We resisted. We said we don't want registration of SIM cards. Now I think we are, with hindsight we are beginning to see the benefit of that registration. I just hope, uh, Dr. M Mr. Musinguzi, that uh, the, of course we all answer to the president. And I think this is where he's citing that they met the president. I suspect that they had been, uh, they had hoped he would hold, like has halted, the registration of border border mm. of taxis. I hope the president does not intervene in this technical dispute of taxation to say, okay. now Musinguzi, stop. Thank you. Leave my people. I hope so, he does it. Back to you, uh, Mr. John Musinguzi. Thank Let you. me put right two, two microphones on you. Yeah. Uh, I'll put two microphones you, on you and give you plenty of time for response. Thank you. Uh, get it recorded as well. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you don't need a question from me. You've been writing down. Thank you. He has closed all Th the loopholes for thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar. And thank you, and gangsters, for the <laughs> wonderful submission. I found this debate very, very interesting and informative. And uh, allow me to speak about three general areas that have come through from all the gangsters. Um, and then I can speak about the specific uh, questions by the Honorable. Oh. Uh, members of the gang today. I, I think, first of all, I want to appreciate the members of the gang um, for the common position that we all seem to agree on, that taxation is a responsibility for every citizen and everyone should pay their fair share of tax, That, but also automation and improvement of the taxation systems using technology is is a must go it is it is a global move we cannot stop it as uganda we cannot afford to lag behind any longer i find that very very important and i appreciate that but also secondly to know that taxation is it is a bigger environment what i handle now is just the tax administration mm -hmm. and the tax administration has a relationship with policy it has a relationship with the culture the culture of the taxpayers mm -hmm. It has the relationship uh, with the service delivery and all that. I, I really find these points very uh, spot on. Now, let me speak about the general area of double taxation because it has come up. Mr. Msoke thinks we are double taxing. Uh, other members have talked about double taxation. L let me explain the tax head called VAT, value added tax. Value added tax is a tax which you pay uh, at different stages, but actually it's not double taxation. Say the example that Mr. Msoke used. If you go to a factory to buy certain items, you will pay VAT, value added tax 18%. And assuming the goods you are buying are costing you 1 million, they will add another 18%, so you'll pay 1,180,000 for these goods. If you take these goods to your shop, and you start selling them, that process is value addition. As you do your costing, you will add on the 18% of VAT, you will add on your cost for hiring the shop, the cost of power, and many other things. So the items that you initially paid 1,180,000, you will probably sell them at 2 million. So that gap is to cater for the VAT, it is to cater for the cost of running business and your own profit. Now, when you're selling them at two million and you again, as you sell these items and you subject them to the 18 percent, you now get what you collected at the point of selling. You minus what you paid at the point of buying and what you give to your is the difference. So, yes, you have paid VAT at input. You have collected VAT at output, but what you'll pay to government is the difference between <coughs> VAT output collected at selling point minus the VAT input at buying point. VAT is one of those tax heads which fall under a category called indirect taxes. What this means, it is not actually paid by the person paying it to URA. Like you eh? Yes, by the ultimate consumer. So the, the, the one who carries the VAT burden is the one who consumes this good. If the person buying from you 
was also buying to go and retail further. He will have paid you VAT and he will charge VAT and then the difference is what he pays to URA. Now, VAT, let's understand it as a tax aid. It is paid by the final consumer. It is an indirect tax. So if there is anybody who should be protesting VAT, it should not be the businessmen in Chikubo or any part of the world. It should be the consumer who should be saying the cost of buying this item is so high because of VAT. So we need to, we need, yeah, they are trying to protect, <laughs> but, but that, that should point you, that, that should point you to the incentive, this should point you to the incentive of trying to protect. I think for a very long time, because of our culture of non-compliance, and also to some extent because of our own inefficiencies as a tax collecting body, this VAT has been owned and consumed by businesses as if it was their profit. I will tell you, without mentioning taxpayers, because I have a duty to protect them, but for some places where we have installed this technology, we have discovered that what they've been declaring as their actual sales has been suppressed to up to 10%. So the example is, I'm making data sales of 10 million, and to URA, I'm declaring 1 million. These are restaurants here in town of Kampala, some of them, not all. Some landlords have been charging, say, an example of 2 million shillings and declaring 200,000. So with that level of suppression of sales and income, how can we ever collect enough taxes to develop Uganda? Because any country to develop in this world, at least you need to collect 20% and more of your GDP. Uganda, we are just stepping into 14%. How can we develop? We will develop based on loans, but we must service them. That's why Honorable was talking about servicing loans. It takes up all that we collect. So I think it is time for us to know that if we're going to talk about sustainable development for our country, we must improve our tax contribution. And all tax, tax heads like VAT requires from the businesses is to cooperate in collecting this tax and declaring it as you collect it. That is one. Number two, on the side of IFRIS. IFRIS is just the technology now that monitors this tax head. And of course, ultimately, it monitors the income tax because income tax and VAT will have a relationship at the end of the period. So we did not start IFRIS last month with the business. Uh, uh, this technology was acquired by URA before I joined. I think it was acquired in 2019. That's when the contract was signed. When I came on board on, in 2020, it was at the beginning of COVID lockdown. There was no way you could roll out IFRIS because you needed to integrate with the taxpayer system. You needed to sensitize. So we put it on hold. Now, 2021, when the lockdown started easing, we started with the big taxpayers. And we started by engagement. So the manufacturers, uh, the big corporate bodies, organizations around, we went around, sensitized them, integrated with their system. I must commend them. We have found them very receptive to this technology. <laughs> they received it and they started declare transparently. Then we went to the next level, now supermarkets. Supermarkets, they are not yet there, but we also know the reasons why they are not yet there. They actually tried to run to court, if you remember. A number of supermarkets took us to court to block us. And, and I want to... Th <laughs> and, <laughs> and I want, I, I, I want to thank... I, I, I want to thank the judiciary, because they, they stood firm on this matter. They said, no, we cannot stop a government program because an individual has complained about the impact of, of this on their business. So they, they read through and they supported us. So they stopped the application for injunction. Now, they have been adopting, but as they adopt, they tell us, mm -hmm. we shop from Chikubo. Mm -hmm. We compete with Chikubo. Why are you leveraging a technology that will make our sales here transparent when the people who we buy from and the people who sell similar products as us, our competitors, are not on the technology? So at that point, we moved to Chukubu. And uh, that year, here can bear me witness. We started engaging. They said, you know, the cost of business is expensive, buying the EFD. By then, we, are, we were trying to roll it out using the machines. I remember as URA, we had about 400 machines. I said, let's give them all to Chukubu. 
so that at least we can have a few cases on which to benchmark and pilot and people get to know this technology. We gave them out. I want to mention that the usage of those devices has been less than 10%. People found one reason or the other why they would not work. <laughs> now, then we said, okay, can we simplify this technology so that it does not have to depend on a device? So we went and developed a mobile app. A mobile app is installed here on your smartphone. So you go to either Google Store or wherever, you download, uh, uh, or Apple Store, you download this app and you put it. The moment you have this on your mobile phone, the next device you need is a thermal printer, the small printers for printing small receipts. That printer costs about 150,000 at most Uganda shillings. So that is the cost. And remember, we are not saying everybody must be on IFRIS. The gazetted category as an approach of rolling out systematically is VAT registered taxpayers. Who qualifies for VAT registration? Your threshold turnover should at least be 150 million a whole year. So really, affordability cannot be the issue. The real issue is... Mindset. The real issue is what, what this technology what this technology will expose. The other issue is maybe the, the, the procedure, and we're willing to listen, mm -hmm. the procedure, the impact. Because one of the issues that were raised was on things like penalty. When we find you not using IFRIS, when you have been gazetted, you have been enrolled, you are informed on what to do, and you still continue to issue receipts that are not of IFRIS. The law is very specific. It says you must pay a fine of 6 million Uganda shillings. It doesn't matter the value of the item, so it could be 10,000 item. But if you have broken the law, the penalty is 6 million. Now, this is where we need to engage, because if you are saying I have issued a non-physicalized receipt for one reason or the other. Maybe I had no power. Then we can listen. We don't have to penalize you like that. But also, because we have been improving this technology, we have now an offline mode. It can allow you to physicalize even when there is no internet at that one point. So that offline mode should be your evidence to show that, yes, I issued this, but it's because I had no internet and therefore I don't have to be penalized. So in other words, on the side of the technology, it has so many benefits. Anybody rejecting it should give reason. I can mention a few. One of the obvious benefit for the country is that we will collect more revenue. What we are collecting today from that tax head called VAT is about 3.5 trillion. Last year, that's what we collected. Our target this year is slightly higher. Maybe we may increase it to about 4 trillion. But VAT as a contribution to the total collection of the country is at 15%. In other words, for all the taxes we collect, the main contributor is the personal income tax payee. Uh, the next one is, uh, is VAT and then others follow, local excise and others. Now, for other countries, especially around us here in the region, VAT is the main tax contributor. They, it contributes about 30% of the taxes they collect. Now, going by our figure of about 3 trillion, 3.5 trillion, if we improve the efficiency of VAT collection, we can easily increase our collection by another 3.5 so that it contributes 30%. That is tax that is substantial to move the country forward, but at the same time, because it is distributed to all the consumers in the country, not just those on our tax register, it will be nominal for the taxpayer who pays it. But this middleman who collects it, if he becomes an obstacle, we will never reach the actual person who collects this. And that becomes the, 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 the challenge. So, but the other important thing is that if this will level the playing field. So imagine the complaint of supermarkets. You have put on us IFRIS, it is declaring 100% transparency. You have not put it on another sect of the, of the business community. Business chain. Then the business shifts now to the non-compliance. I actually had one of the traders' organization, I think it was FUTA, one of its members. He was blaming the collapse of Uchumi, Taskies, uh, Game, all these big supermarkets that closed. 
on taxation. And really, the way he was presenting it was wrong. But I think he had the point. Only that the point was pointing to him more than it's pointing to URA. He was saying these supermarkets were overtaxed. That's why they closed. I'm not sure about that. But I think the obvious reason why they could have closed, they were outcompeted by non-compliance. <coughs> because the moment you declare fully and your neighbor does not, then this one who is not declaring who can afford to undersell you will take all your businesses. And that is why IFRIS is important. We level the playing field. Everybody pays their fair share, and then the non-compliant are protected from the consequences of non-compliance by the majority. This is the other benefit. Now, I'm coming to that. <laughs> that is also not true, but let me come to it a little later. <laughs> now, the, the other benefit of IFRIS is, of course, that it will stamp out corrupt the, the smuggling bit. Uh, as my brother mentioned, here there has been a bit of smuggling, but we are tightening on that. Now with IFRIS, you must stock in. So we must know how your products come from K abroad, you imported them from Kenya. At the customs entry point, we must know. Have they come from manufacturer X? Then we will know. So now this one will protect both the business environment from the effects of smuggling, but it will also protect our manufacturers because now the falsification of goods you know people have been manufacturing you know water in their houses and branding them the brands of those that manufacture so you must have a source of the stock you're putting in ifris and that is a big benefit and then of course it will improve record keeping this is for everybody if you don't have any record keeping ifris is enough software for you to keep your records it will protect you from the thieves because all oh, mentioned Someone will bring their 25 bottles of soda and put them in your fridge and use your power and sale. But now with IFRIS, that stock must be accounted for. So everybody is protected. Now, I really appreciate the support on IFRIS. It's a good technology. We can only improve it. And we've been improving it by expanding the channels. Now we have it on mobile phone. Maybe we can shall put it at another level. But also improve the implementation. And this is why things like presence of the army coming in, I, I really think it is also exaggerated. One, for a record, URA works with both Uganda police and Uganda People's Defense Force to give us uh, additional forces to protect us, to protect us from the dire consequences of stopping smuggling. Yeah. This thing is very, is, it, is, it, is, it, is a, it is a very, it is a very profitable venture. You cannot stop someone from earning their billions and you think you will just go. So there is an element of risk to our staff and that requires, but for the record, the, the numbers in totality are not more than 500. I think we have about 250 from police and another 250 from Uganda People's Defense Force. They do a splendid job in protecting our people, in countering aggressive forms of smuggling and others. Now, but even for IFRIS, I, I, I saw something on social media. It was also misrepresented where we had a meeting at UMA. And uh, <laughs> Dr. Msoke was there with me. Eh? And, uh, you know, just the misbehavior of our local people here. There was a gentleman who caused the fracas and there was a fight. And, and and I was up telling them, no, no, come down and let the media go out. I was trying to say, let's not put this one on social media. It ended up there anyway. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say, the job we are doing is not taking a cup of coffee and enjoying everybody's friendship and what. There's a bit of risk. And the soldiers we have are just to prevent that. So when we are sending people in Chukubu and we send a few armed people, they, they are not more than 10 Let's not make a mountain out of that, that we have militarized. I can assure you there is no militarization of revenue collection. We only have a minimum. And the number we have now is the number that has been there for years. I have not asked for additional. So for the record, the Honorable Semuju, there are no 3,000 troops at, your, at URA. <laughs> you can come and we share with you. Be because we actually give them a small allowance and we put them, we put them in our books of accounts. So you will definitely see our financial reports. The numbers are there and they are not that high. So the other general point I want to comment about uh, other than double taxation and IFRIS, is the part of law enforcement. I think it has also come through that some of our people are, are, are brutal. They uh, are high-handed. High-handed. Mm. They are unreasonable. Honestly, if that is happening, and I know it is because sometimes I receive these complaints, 
just know that it's not the position of the leadership of URA. One of the things we, we adopted. We, 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 three we can't years. tell you. We can't tell you who. As, you, yes. as Benjamin said, we fear yes. to tell you. No, don't. But what we are saying is, <laughs> can can you train people? Oscar, we are doing that. Mm. I, I, one of the things we changed about three years ago when we were celebrating our 30 years uh, birthday, we changed our core values. We have three core values that we promote. And anybody who falls short on these core values really will not belong to us or, or with us for a long time. Number one is patriotism. We believe that this work we do is out of love for our country and we should do it with all the dedication and sacrifice. It's not an ordinary job. Number two is integrity. Anybody who thinks he can be a tax collector and still continue to be corrupt is in the wrong place. We must stop corruption from our organization as a minimum because the rest of the country has entrusted us to go in the kitchen and cook for everybody to eat. If we go there with big stomachs, then we will not have anything to serve. The other one is professionalism. We must act professionally, and high-handedness can never be part of professionalism. We must be very, very courteous and very listening. So we are working on that, but it's not something you can transform overnight. So if we still have some hangovers from the previous way of conducting business, we are dealing with that. The only cooperation we need from you, Oscar, and colleagues, just share with us information that is specific because you are the one who is being asked to pay a bribe if that is what our people are doing you are the one being asked being mishandled please put your stand firm and share with us and we have created a whole division <coughs> called staff compliance to deal with the issue of uh, staff discipline it is headed by an assistant commissioner we have equipped him with enough uh, staff to investigate, to follow through, because there must be fairness. As you know, sometimes when a taxpayer wants to get away with something and it's not accepted by the tax collector, it can also be twisted to mean that we are terrible and high-handed. Mm. So for us to be True. fair to our staff and be fair to our taxpayers, we have a whole investigative team that investigates any cases of indiscipline and we deal with them. Okay. As a matter of fact, we've lost quite a number of our staff. Unfortunately, we don't pride in this, but they have left in big numbers. Why? They have not complied with these standards. And all we need is information to deal with that. Now, allow me, Oscar, to speak about very specific uh, comments made uh, by the gangsters on these issues. <laughs> number one, um, by my brother, Dr. M uh, Tadias here, uh, I've already answered the issue of double taxation, uh, penalties I've answered. Then, yes, asking URA to give them room uh, to, to first understand if reserves. I think we have also answered, and I think Honorable Katun to mention this very, very clear. Let's not ask that we stop doing this good thing. In fact, what we are going to do here, uh, Dr. Tadias and your colleagues, we are going now to have a permanent presence in the central business area, not for purposes of collecting tax and enforcing, but we are opening up an office called Taxpayer Services. And this will be just a dedicated team to educate the tax collectors, I mean the taxpayers, to mm. help them overcome the fear for technology that my sister Lydia spoke about, mm. because technology can be very intimidating, mm. to help them learn to file those that have no accountants, because with yeah. IFRIS actually, I did not mention this, but it takes away even the burden of filing. The, the usual filing, monthly filing of VAT, this one will go away because whatever you are selling, you are fiscalizing. We have a record of it. So at the yeah. end of the month, you just click a button and you submit your return. Mm. But we'll have a presence to do that. And in, that in, will in, address in, the other you, issues. You address, I have about four people sending messages. Says, yes. This one says, uh, do, have, can you give examples where it has worked before? Because it assumes a perfect market. Then Matthias and Stephen mm. Kaheru says, what about uh, a happy taxpayer? Mm. Are you contributing towards that? Yes. For example, uh, when Parliament assented to a TV tax mm. um, and then people seemed so unhappy about it it was mm. brought down okay. or what was the other one internet tax or ot ott OT. yeah, even that one Over so top, what yes. what they seem to suggest what are you doing okay. towards making a happy taxpayer maybe that's what you're referring okay. to now that's mm. that is true that is very true but uh, uh, 
but maybe uh, the, 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 the first part of, of the question was saying um, examples, mm -hmm. examples of where this has worked. Mm -hmm. Now, the, this, uh, uh, the, this IFRIS, I think, was first introduced in Tanzania about 2010. Now, for Tanzania, the, 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 every business issues an e-receipt, whether you are large or small, whether you are VAT registered or not. Anybody who has visited Dar es Salaam or Arusha recently will testify. It is a standard. Um, Rwanda adopted it, I think, slightly after Tanzania from about 2013. They've also been at it for about 10 years. And that one is a standard. You can't buy anything in Rwanda, whether it's a kiosk, without an e-receipt. Kenya adopted it much later, but they're also doing well. Actually, in the region, we are the last ones to get on this board, of this, uh, to get this technology on board. Ethiopia, those who have been in Ethiopia, you know it. And then, of course, you don't have to mention Europe. Europe, they, they have used it for such a long time that today, if you go there shopping, on your way out of the airport, you get your tax refund. So that is an instant benefit for travelers. Whatever you buy that has tax, you get your refund at the airport. How do they know? IFRIS. As you are buying, your purchases were being physicalized, and at the exit point, they know how much you, you have paid. But as a departing uh, visitor, you should be refunded. Sure. So that is where we're going. And now that is the benefit that IFRIS will bring. Because the complaint with us has been, you are a does not refund us how do we refund you we are dealing with invoice trading the example you brought earlier fake invoices we must first verify before we refund mm. so if we will wipe out that so the benefits are many refund is one of those that i should have mentioned now the other part how do you ensure a happy taxpayer this if in itself should make our taxpayers happy why if you've been a, ta a tenant paying two million for your rent and your landlord has been declaring 200,000 and that's the smallest city gives you. If we now ensure that what you pay is what is captured, it constitutes part of your VAT input. Remember the, the concept I explained earlier, you will get what you have incurred in the running of your business minus it from what uh, you have collected at the point of sale. So. In a way, IFRIS should make the taxpayers happy. What I think we need to deal with, and I really appreciate uh, Capital Gang for giving me this opportunity, is to intensify the benefits and education. Because the other people who are opposed to it, and for obvious reasons, have been sponsoring wrong messages. I have seen some people who are even below the VAT threshold saying but really your turnover is below even 50 million you are not even on the on the on the presumptive tax register but you're saying but so i think let's stop misinforming the public to to increase the animosity against this you are we already bad enough by the role of collecting tax from people and people naturally do not want to pay tax but then if we add on the other ben blames uh, of, of we, we are being unreasonable and all that, it will increase the hostility. But thanks to forums like this, let's explain ourselves. I think mm -hmm. the taxpayers will eventually appreciate. Because the technology that makes your <coughs> responsibility of returning to your RIA monthly being very smooth and enjoyable, you click a button, you don't have to upload, hire an accountant, why would you not embrace such a, and it's not increasing what you've been paying what you've been paying you'll continue to pay we are just unblocking the agents in between who have been retaining that money and not allowing us to go up to the end of the value chain which is mm -hmm. much larger and much better so let me proceed with the specific answers um my brother oo spoke about business shifting from chikubo to other parts of town this is this is true business has shifted. There are many Bikubos now in all the major towns. There are many, many Bikubos in all the suburbs. But this technology, again, will apply to all. So we are rolling out in a, in a phased way, but there is nowhere. So, brother, oh, oh, hiding in that part of the world where you think we'll not find you. <laughs> <laughs> we are coming. Now you are coming slowly, uh, gradually. Um, yes, and it's our responsibility to explain this. So where we have not done well, we promise to improve, okay. but we are committed to mm. this. Now, uh, value for money, that's a question that he's answering very well with my members of parliament. 
But again, to mention that what we are collecting is too little for, for our country to develop. We must collect a little more, and that is where we are focusing. Now, Benjamin spoke about uh, constant reminders from you after bad uh, road experience. By the way, let me mention to you, Benjamin, that even as tax collectors, we are taxpayers. Mm -hmm. And our tax contribution is significant. <coughs> Pay contributes the highest. I, I fall in that category of civil servants who pay the highest band, 40%. By the time you go home, you have really paid some good amount of tax. So we would all be motivated from a good uh, environment to feel encouraged. And I think a lot of good work has happened in the rest of the country. I travel a lot to check on the teams across the borders. I really appreciate the value for money when it comes to infrastructure investment, especially up country. Kampala challenges, I think they're also temporal, but let the members of parliament speak about that. I, I think the potholes have really concentrated in the city here. And maybe something is being done to... to I see a lot of works now going on. Hopefully we'll have more enjoyable rides, but... Yes, where I pick 60%. Mm. <laughs> okay, now, Benjamin also spoke about stopping warehousing of some items, like wheat. Yeah, this is true. Uh, we, 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 we have been listing every year, we come up with a number of items which we must stop warehousing. Now, first of all, for all the countries around us, we are one of the countries that collect the list uh, of the international trade taxes up front. For Kenya and Tanzania, because probably because of the benefit of being at, at the, the ocean, sea. The sea, yeah. they collect at least 80% of their taxes at Mombasa. Mm -hmm. Anyway, housing takes only about 20%. For Uganda, the ratios are inverted. We collect about 20% at Mombasa, 80 is warehoused. Now, the challenges of warehousing are many, including the risk of loss of that revenue. While you're holding it there for the six months allowed by law, some items are disappearing. So we are working on technology to help mm. improve the supervision. But again, at the same time, yeah. we must also work towards an efficient way of collecting. <laughs> I, I, I want customs. to give you three minutes okay. to close out. Okay, uh, very, very, very quickly, in, Oscar, let yes. me now move. Now, for VAT, when is VAT payable? In the law, VAT is payable upon invoicing or upon receiving of payment, whichever comes earlier. Now, but even in the law, there's an exception for people with a small turnover, like 500 million turnover and below. You can apply to pay strictly upon receiving of payment. We agree that it ties up the cash flow, but at the same time, this is what the law says. You can pay upon being invoiced and that is what it is until we change it this is, but we it was changed for government suppliers recently now government suppliers pay upon being paid however after giving this relaxation to the government suppliers some of them now get paid and they don't pay us so we are fighting to get integration on if on if miss so that we know when they are paid mm. um <coughs> Uh, in the interest of time, let me yes, move to others. Yes. Honorable Semuju spoke about charge of four dollars per kilogram on jeans. First of all, <laughs> uh, the, the exact rate, Honorable, is three point five dollars per kg. But again, you don't need the weighing scale or an EFD in your shop. <laughs> this weighing scale is done when you are importing. So if we have a weighing scale at our bond you will pay your taxes there. Once you go, then you sell per piece. You don't have to sell per kilo. Otherwise, you'll be selling one and a half trousers. <laughs> but we must, we must think about the reason behind this law, because again, it's a law passed by parliament. Mm -hmm. I think the idea was to protect the infant uh, industry, industry textile. textile industry. Uganda is one of the best types of cotton, long thread, but we are importing oil. So there is a time when we must pay the price for purposes of growing our own home industries. And I think that's the reason behind this law. Let's let's bear with it and let's pay it sacrificially. And it's not on all textiles, by the way. It is on only 47 items. The textiles and the garment sector has about a thousand. Only 47 are paying this specific tax mm. and it's for that benefit. Uh, pressure, okay. 
<laughs> why new technology is a problem? I've already answered that uh, honorable. You've answered let, that let one. Let me now answer this. There was a comment for Lydia on that yes. one. One of the biggest online platforms. I, I'm coming were, to that. Oh, I'm oh, coming oh, to that. Oh, just, just one second. I'll okay. give you the time. Okay. One of the biggest online platforms where many young people traded their goods is Facebook. And the government of Lydia Anyoto blocked that three years ago. <laughs> Let her first work on that one before she talks about traders. Go on, John. Yes. Mm. Yes, <laughs> okay, so mm. maybe <laughs> if, if I'm to answer to that, let me not no, no, lose don't, it. Don't yeah, answer to that one. Okay. Twitter, okay. Mm. okay. Mm. So I, I really want to thank uh, Honorable Katutu because he has uh, b basically, mm. basically went through that's why consider that the <laughs> No, but he's being honest because I, I think the logical question there should be no manufacturer, there, there, there should be no there, sh there should be no investor. Yeah. Yes, there, there should be no investor mm, who, who benefits from being a, a master of all trades. I don't see why manufacturing is not enough space for you to focus on. But what I suspect, and it's something that we should logically investigate and this is also the guidance that uh we got from his excellence the president when we took this issue said find out why these manufacturers want to own shops could it be the issue that honorable katutu has raised high margins because if i'm a manufacturer i've produced my shirt at a cost of ten thousand I will not complain if I find someone selling it at 1,000, uh, at uh, 1,000, 11,000 or 12,000, knowing that he's, but if he wants to put it at 20, and then the imported uh, textiles come and uh, be sold at 15, there can be a reason why I have an outlet. So I think this, let's investigate this with open minds. This is what his excellency the president guided when this issue was taken to him. He said, go and investigate why so that we can uh, guide our our taxpayers you know to take moderate profits but also su support mm. uh, local manufacturing now the let me now move to 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 the issues raised by honorable lydia the 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 online business it is true this is a global phenomenon business has shifted from brick and mortar to online what are we doing as URA? one we introduced the law and i want to thank parliament for passing this to start taxing online businesses a part of their income tax and we passed a good percentage five percent so they've started filing returns this was passed last year we want to see what they what they pay us by the end but some have already started paying a uh, provisional income tax i will come with the figures next time on how much we have collected but also we provided a way to pay VAT online. So they've been filing and paying VAT uh, uh, tax mm -hmm. on a quarterly basis. What we are trying to acquire now is another technology to monitor them effectively because now we are relying on voluntary compliance. But the benefit with online business, you live and trail. Mm -hmm. So it is in their interest now mm -hmm to be declaring the truth. Because if they don't, and then we have a technology that can find out how much they took from our Ugandan jurisdiction, then we must make them pay backwards. So I want to support, okay. I want to appreciate that mm. comment. We are, we are adopting it. Final word from you. Uh, Final word, yes. Comrade Oscar. Mm. First of all is to thank you uh, as a host for giving us this platform. Number two, is to appreciate all those taxpayers who have been faithfully paying their fair share of tax, carrying the heavy load on behalf of others. Mm. The county will need to know when this strike is ending. But I'm not the one that's sponsoring the strike. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let Dr. Msoke answer that. The issues are against you. <laughs> uh, okay, now let me, let me continue no, you, with you, my appreciation. With, yes, I want to conclusion. thank all those tax, In fact, tax uh, businesses, uh, taxpayers, yes, yeah. who have continued to open their shops uh, even despite the calls from some quarters to strike. Oh, okay. I, I saw this on Monday when the group of Futa was saying we must strike. A number of businesses downtown opened. A number of them closed on the first day, probably for fear of being attacked. Because I was told there were also threats. If you open, we shall crush you. And I want to thank the law enforcement organs for being present and assuring the people that no one will crush you. If you want to open, open. 
and I saw the next day there was full opening across town. I want really to appeal to all taxpayers. Closing, demonstrating is not a solution to this challenge we have today. All the challenges we have discussed, be it the specific tax, be it the unfair competition, be it the IFRIS technology, are all things that we can get answers to through amicable discussion, mature discussion like we are having here. So let's engage, let's solve these issues. If there is a time for Uganda to be united in mm. developing our country, it's now. Okay. Why? All the support we've been relying on, you had. The budget is 58 trillion. The domestic taxes we are trying to collect will be 31 trillion. Who will fund the gap? Loans. Those loans are dwindling. Those which are there, we shall pay very high interest. The grants are no more. So my final appeal to the people mm -hmm. of Uganda and all those doing business in this country, let us join you, hands you, 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 to collect yeah. enough revenue you could also to develop add in. our country. 14% yes. will not help us develop. Mm. We need to get 20 and above. Thank you very you much are, for this opportunity. You could also add in how you are very thankful for people who pay big taxes. I'm very, uh, and very I will thankful. smile here and, and then say, we'll even send you certificates. I will send instead you Instead of harassment. <laughs> <laughs> we Oscar. shall do that, Oscar. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> instead of harassment. Oscar. Uh, yes. Do you name is pay, Zakayo. Do you pay big tax or you collect big tax? Pay. Mm. I think to collect. So, uh, the radio station has allowed me another 10 minutes. Oh, very And good. having invited uh, uh, Mr. Katana here, um, let me use the 10 minutes uh, added uh, to my time, to our time here, looking at the alternative budget, uh, Honorable Semuju and Mr. Katana. So if I give uh, Honorable Semuju uh, three minutes and Mr. Katana two minutes, uh, what are the highlights of the alternative budget, Honorable Semuju? This is the first budget in the world that is going to be summarized in three minutes. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is the beginning of the conversation. Mm. The major what inspired issue, you to have an alternative by, budget? By our rules, we, 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 wow. right. we, we make proposals as the opposition. Mm. The first major issue in our budget is debt servicing. As he said, 34% of our budget now, the, the 58 or 60 or 52, is going to be money for servicing the debt. In fact, the figure is 20 trillion. And uh, if you read reports of the Auditor General, I think uh, about 35% of revenue collected by Musinguzi goes towards interest payment and, uh, and uh, paying of the principal. So our proposal is that we need to reduce on borrowing. Partly because even the money that we borrow, we don't use all of it. Oscar, you need to know that our debt, the total now is at 97 trillion, but we have 18 trillion that we have borrowed that we are not using. And we are paying commitment fees on the money that we are not using, 434 billion every year. You borrow money for a road and you, you don't do it, including money borrowed in 2018. We have just borrowed money from Africa Development Bank to do the Kampala Jinja Expressway. But we haven't paid, we haven't compensated people for work to start. Yet the commitment fees you begin paying at the date of, uh, the date you contract uh, the, the, the loan. We're also looking at the structure of the economy. You have 25 banks licensed commercial, only four are local. Even what they call the most take borrowing, you're actually borrowing from Stambik, from other banks that are not owned by Uganda. And then annually you're paying 7 trillion in interest which is repatriated. You go to the telecom sector, including uh, the energy sector. So the key players in our economy, so we have a foreign-owned economy. And that's why unemployment is going up, but it's now um, at 14%. Poverty levels are now at 20%. So the lack of the aggregate demand, which is forcing these people to find other ways, because there are no people who are buying. So shops are being closed because people don't have money to buy. And the Bank of Uganda wants to use fiscal policy and, and monetary policy uh, between them and finance to continue tightening because they are fighting inflation. They don't care whether people are buying or not. So the second and last one because of the budget, I mean because of the time, we have also made proposals on how to clean the budget itself. Oscar, 
we have 780 billion shilling in the budget to transport public officers like Ofono Pono. We will spend 400 billion shilling on replacing vehicles. We'll spend 200, <coughs> no, 400 on fueling. When you see them all over, they are spending 400 billion shilling every year fueling their vehicles. 220 billion replacing the old vehicles. 150 billion on maintaining, going to garages. We have 697 billion in the budget for inland travel. You have 300 and 397 billion, 297 billion for special meals and drinks. You have 180 billion for renting, 180 billion. Ask the government, give me this one, I'll construct for you offices. Every year you are spending 180 billion for renting. renting. We have, I'll give you, I'll give, I'll give you, <coughs> continue, I'll give continue. you an example, Oscar. Our embassy in France, every year we pay 3.9 billion in rent. I said, you guys, even if you went to borrow money and construct the embassy, how can you pay a rent of 3.9 billion every year? And uh, a whole mm. figure is provided in, in yeah. you have 162 billion for donation. So I will not exhaust the list. So yeah. our proposal is that uh, we, you need to clean the budget, okay. get this money to fund education and health, also they, reduce... Do, do, are they listening this time round? We have said many of the things before. Mm. We, we have to continue shouting. I hope you didn't put the president's wardrobe in the alternative. Uh, no, no, we put there other things about yeah. the president. Okay. Because you see, mm. <clears throat> other people run from the president. If the president has a convoy of 60 vehicles, the, the, the speak of parliament will have 20 hours in Shishlis. The speak of parliament and crack were moving in a room. Both mm. of them, not one, but two. But ours has about 12 vehicles because the president has 67, including his children. So the bad manners of your president are going to be around by his ministers. Museveni came here, with, he had a convoy of six vehicles. His ministers were even buying their own vehicles. So why should Musingu correct taxes? And we are spending all these taxes on ourselves. Okay. So that's the gist of, of the, the, our proposal. The, the Benjamin Katana, do you have something quick to add on? Thank, thank you very much, Oscar. The minister has spoken about the specifics. Yeah. Yeah, but basically the starting point is that uh, running of state affairs, running the state is largely about planning, prioritization, allocation of the resources that the country has got. And uh, earlier on, we are talking about collection of taxes. So, uh, and I th the proposals speak to the general agenda of prioritizing service delivery, ensuring that the environment for doing business, you fix roads, fix uh, cost of borrowing money, uh, uh, and things of that nature. So that the, mm. the, and this was the third process for your budget? Yes. Okay. So that, that the, the business environment facilitates growth of business and ultimately increase in collection of revenue that does not, uh, you know, inflict mm. a lot of damage on the businesses because the businesses are many, are bigger and able to pay these taxes. The other uh, aspects he has spoken about them, running a lean government, so that the resources are allo okay. that should go into financing mm. of these luxuries of office bearers. Luxuries. Yes. Okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Focus. Uh, Abdu, this time round, will they listen? Because Ofono Pondo is looking at you keenly, not taking even any note. Uh, no, I think there is a big problem now because I see some sort of thinking in the Minister of Finance. They think they run this budget themselves. That's why as we talk now, I don't know whether my brother Ibrahim has read the core agenda, the communication that came on the force literally unilaterally cutting the budget uh, without recourse to other stakeholders mm. say you people we are faced with this sort of crisis what we are having today and Uganda should brace themselves for harder times is one the resource envelope is now thinner than it was that reality should dawn on us therefore we can only improve by cutting down the public expenditure you know, drastically, drastically. And then, where I don't agree is like, the little resources we have, we should invest it in a way we can make a little bit of more money. For example, tourism.
money can come even in a short run so we need to invest in areas like that yes we might need to invest in health but to get money for health uh, or even infrastructure roads you need income so you need to invest the little resources in areas where you'll be making more money than consumptive areas okay we need to think about that thank you Avono Ponda, are you listening personally i'm listening i'm not so sure that the nrm party government and leaders that uh, i speak for are listening seriously because the president has severally said we need to be frugal we need to prioritize but when you see the actions of government and of course as we say the back stops with him he's the boss when you see the behavior in the executive the behavior now in parliament it doesn't seem that people are listening how come that people have impunity even to say we want to respond to public criticism this is the leadership in parliament led by nrm if the speaker of parliament who is nrm can say we want don't bother me with those that nonsense and it is on the hands of the parliament sure then nrm is not listening if you look at the kind of somebody is complaining about 750 billion for for, for for accommodation for government offices. 180 billion. 180 billion. But you have got as parliament to give 1.7 billion to four commissioners of parliament. The auditor general of, parliament, the auditor general of government, mm, no. who is an officer of parliament, has good terms and conditions and retirement package. Just this week, when the Secretary of the Treasury has issued a tease circular, the, the one uh, my brother is talking about uh, Abudu, the corrigenda, cutting expend, uh, expend, uh, budget, and you are awarding 500 million. But it came from finance. No, no, uh, what I'm saying. It is finance um, that issued the corrigenda. Uh, yeah, this is what I'm saying. Finance that has proposed the 500. Uh, uh, now you're blaming. Well, I, I, I know that the, pro, the, 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 the proposal was by an Andalama Fabi, and you, have, uh, no. you gave 500. And I'm saying the decision because you, you, your parliament could have rejected. No, your parliament could have rejected because there are many things, there are many things that have come from the executive and you rejected. In this particular one of John Mwanga, I've written an article by there today. I said, uh, outgoing, uh, uh, Katoto, John, John, John Mwanga, mm. outgoing AG John because Mwanga, talking about, uh, and, and parliament's 500 sweetener. And yeah. I've, asked, I've asked John Mwanga, who's my friend, I said, if you accept this, you're accepting to be robbed by people who, want, who are trying to cover their trail of mischief in that parliament. So, okay. the, the way parliament is doing things, the way the executive is doing things, it appears that no we are not listening. listening. And Thank I think you. if NRM does not listen, trouble. NRM will go down the way Kano went, the way UNIP in Zambia went. We shall continue to, to, to root for NRM, but I think we, we are losing our way. Media work harder. Conclusions are beginning. Uh, both uh, Dr. Musoke Nagenda and John Musingu, I can't trust you to have last word on gang. Lydia will have it. So, conclusion from you, Dr. Musoke Nagenda. There's a comment from uh, a, a Roth Sami 52 on Twitter, and the comment says that uh, let you Chiku people pay your taxes. We in formal jobs painfully pay, pay ye, and that is the, that 30% is brutal and we have nothing to do. However, URA sometimes also over assumes taxes and that's the problem. And so some people are saying, finally, you should also pay. Yeah, conclusion from you, uh, Dr. You, Oscar. Again. Mm. I just want to thank yes. Honorable Samuel's submission was so good and excellent. Mm. And uh, our other concern was about the recovery fund because we are allocated 200 billion, but no single trader has ever accessed that fund. So it's, it sounds so funny whereby they want to milk us, but we are not being facilitated. We still have serious challenges with COVID effects, and I think it's so unfair to overtax the traders. For sure, uh, by the time the lockdown was done, 
a lot. Uh, most of our traders' property has been auctioned because even we still have a challenge. Even the loans we are using, they are so expensive. But uh, the other recovery fund was giving room for recovery. One year, and then even you can clear the loan earlier. But unfortunately, it seems that I don't know who took the money. Or maybe it, uh, it's about corruption, but we think that the traders need also, to, uh, the recovery fund needs to be considered. Mm. 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 I don't think in my mind that you traders are the ones paying taxes. Your complaint is that these taxes are making people stay away. Mm. Yes. Because you factor all these into the final price. He's actually the consumer. So your, your complaint is not that you are being asked to pay tax. The, the but, but, but the fact is that when the taxes that's are what high, he thinks. but no, they, of, of course they affect our businesses. Yeah. Mm. But they even haven't even yeah. talked about the withholding. When I t gave a scenario of withholding, you find that even we traders, we lend money to the government, and by the when you lend money to the government, there is no interest. When I got the money, at a high interest rate. So I think we need to discuss mm. more about okay. how businesses operate, so that we starting. find possible yeah. solutions to our challenges. Thank you. Uh, John Mosingozi, conclusion. Thank you very much, Oscar, and thank you so much, colleagues. <laughs> Lydia, you are going to have last word. Thank you, thank you so much, mm. panelists. My, my last words really is I am taking this opportunity to appeal to all taxpayers that we are ready as Uganda Revenue Authority to engage with you. If there are any areas of clashing, we are ready to smoothen out those areas and make sure, because we have a common interest, a thriving business is a source of sustainable revenue. It will not help us for us to collect today and tomorrow we have nowhere to collect from. So that is a common interest. Which is Whatever what business Mr. you Kenagenda own, is yes, mm. this is Soke's business, Capital Gang here, your business, government is a silent owner of about 30%. So how do we benefit from you closing tomorrow? We have a common interest. Let's work together. Okay. So let's call off demonstrations and others. And finally, Oscar, let me read out the numbers they can call. Because we've all agreed that there could be cases of indiscipline, we are ready to deal with this up to logical conclusion. The numbers you can call in case of any indiscipline, corruption, high-handedness, whatever form, which does not please you as a taxpayer, Please call the number 077-141-075. Alternatively, call 032-344-3033. Okay. These numbers go yeah. to that Department of Staff Compliance. There is also an mm -hmm. email address. Mm -hmm. Very quickly. The email address yeah. is J... Abola, Abola is, is, is spelled as A-B-O-L-A -A at U-R-A-dot-G-O-dot-U-G. Okay, final word, Lydia. You. Final um, word on gang. Yeah, <laughs> Lydia, senior presidential advisor. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Final word. Final word, yes. Lydia. <laughs> Final uh, word, Lydia. Like only have thank, a microphone. I, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Musoke for having come to express the views of the Mwanawansi, uh, Mutuawansi, and maybe the community, the real community in the business community in Uganda. Uh, they are the, the most important sector of our country. They represent the majority of the Ugandans who are hustling for survival, but also okay. to contribute to the trading community. So thank you. So, thank and you, also thank to you, John yeah. Musinguzi. John Musinguzi is called Zakayo in many of the forums. <laughs> <laughs> so Zakayo, collect your taxes, but mindful of all the complaints. We, we are ready to work with you. Yes, and support, especially if you are going to help me mobilize women mm. to join the trading community. Okay. I, I end by announcing the death of uh, the first cultural leader, Ambassador... Uh, mm. 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 Ambassador Wamimbi passed on last evening. He was an ambassador so of Uganda sad. to Canada. Mm. He was our first LC5 chairman of the big Abugisu district, Mbale. Mm. 
and uh, okay. also the first cultural Thank you, leader Lydia. of our community. Mm. May he so rest A in good time to also peace. commiserate uh, mm. with Abdul Katontu, who lost his yes, brother. Yes, Abdul Katontu uh, lost his young brother week. in yes, a fatal accident. Very sad. May he so our brother Abdul. Thank you so much, listeners of uh, Capital Gang Star Cafe. Uh, the table, uh, uh, Semoja, I don't know whether he participated today. No, he's still fasting. Thank you, gangsters of the day. Uh, Mr. Benjamin Katana, Honorable Semuju, Honorable Katuntu, Honorable Wanyoto, Mr. Fono Pondo, Dr. Musoke Nagenda, and the Commissioner General of URA, Dr. Uh, Mr. John Musinguzi. Thank you so much for appearing on Gang. Uh, I am Oscar Semwe Amsoke, and I shall see you next week.